Welcome, my name is Todd Hoagland. I'm an associate professor at the Medical College of Wisconsin, and I'm one of the consulting editors for the sixth edition of Netter's Atlas of Human Anatomy. Um, today I'm gonna to talk a little bit about Frank Netter's picture of cranial nerve seven. Um, and I find that Dr. Netter's brilliance really is that he's able to simplify anatomy, but yet still maintain its richness. Cranial nerve seven is one of my favorite cranial nerves, and um, it, is really fascinating because of its intricate course from the brain stem starting out at the cerebellopontine angle and then it finally makes its way through a bunch of different foramen and ends up at effectors such as the lacrimal gland to produce tears, the salivary glands to produce saliva. It also innervates all the muscles of the face um, and so thereby getting its name, so cranial nerve seven, the facial nerve. Um, and it's fascinating because if you get into the clinical correlations of the, uh, of the facial nerve, you can get disparate symptoms such as not uh, able to produce tears, uh, dry mouth because there's no saliva uh, from specific glands. Uh, you can get hearing issues where sound can be much louder than normal. And so it's fascinating. If we take a look at cranial nerve seven, Dr. Netter does a beautiful job of showing how cranial nerve seven comes off the brain stem and he shows all the major contributions going up through here to the pterygopalatine ganglion and then up into the eye. Uh, you can also see the fibers which come all the way down out the stylomastoid foramen and then eventually out to all parts of the face and it's just a it's a very well done and the great teaching point for this is spits and cries baby. So if you uh, always remember spits and cries for cranial nerve seven, you'll know that there are nerve fibers which go all the way up to produce the tears for the cries, fibers that which also go all the way down into the mouth. Um, and then in addition, there's also taste fibers that go with that as well. So one example, if a patient were to have a lesion of cranial nerve seven, and it's very early on, they wouldn't be able to produce tears ipsilaterally. They wouldn't be able to produce saliva from the salivary glands on that same side. They would lose the ability to taste from the anterior two thirds of the tongue on the same side. Sound would be a little bit louder. And to a patient, these are mysterious symptoms. And how can there be a specific problem that it affects all those areas and in this case it'd be one lesion of cranial nerve seven and I think Dr. Netter did a beautiful job of showing all the different salivary glands, um, showing the courses of the nerves and then really nicely showing how the facial nerve comes out and innervates all the muscles of facial expression. So it's a beautiful thing.